Hey, you caught me the way nature intended. Funny thing, today's episode is about just that. Stay with us while we cook food in its purest form. Welcome to another episode of The Ananas Chef. I am your host, Steve Anderson, and today we are cooking clean. What does that mean? That means we're gonna be working with ingredients that are close to the source, where they originated from, close to nature. You know, not really processed, not really refined, not overly, um, you know, handled and you know, manufactured like the fast food restaurant burgers and stuff. We're gonna cook as close to nature as we can. So today what we've got is we're gonna make a homemade tabbouleh. We're gonna have pomegranate seeds in it. We're gonna put some onions and some tomatoes and some green onions and lots of parsley, some fresh lemon. Your traditional tabbouleh, but we're gonna add a little seasonality to it by throwing some pomegranates in there. We're also gonna make a homemade salad dressing for some wild greens. And we're gonna do a cranberry and ginger pear dressing. And we're gonna reduce that down throw some fresh ginger in there, fresh pears. We're gonna make a vinaigrette out of it and toss that right into some greens. And then the last thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a nice piece of fresh haddock and we're just gonna pan sear it right in the pan with some fresh cilantro and ginger and garlic and a little bit of olive oil and a splash of white wine. Doesn't that sound, the flavors there are just intense. And that's really what it's all about. We're gonna work on bold flavors, but it's all super, super fresh. And, and notice I didn't say a lot of salt. And we've got some edge on standby, and we're just going to kiss everything at the very end. We're not going to add any salt to any of the recipes. We'll just pinch it at the end just to kind of give it that little bit of flair, bring those flavors out. So we're going to get, we're going to start on the tabbouleh. So what I've got is I've got a medium saucepan here, and we're just going to heat up some water. We're going to cook a, probably about a cup to a cup and a half of bulgur wheat, which is a, uh, it's a cracked, Whole, uh, cracked wheat, uh, the actual whole wheat is the farrow, and that's the actual whole grain. This is just cracked once, and it's called bulgur wheat, and that's what the t standard tabbouleh is traditionally made from. So we're gonna cook that, and I've actually got some already cooked, so we'll be able to get right into the salad aspect of it as well. But it's a, it's a great, nutritious whole grain, very, very popular in the Middle East. You'll see that in a lot of Middle Eastern restaurants on the menu as a, as a cold salad. So we're gonna, we're gonna serve that as a side. And, uh, and while the water's coming up to temp, I'm going to do a little prep on the veg here. And that's probably enough tomato right there for what we need. And our water is boiling, so now we're going to take our bulgur wheat, and we're just going to add that right to the simmering water. And we want to give that just a quick stir, just to kind of get that moving around. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this back up to a boil, and this takes about 10 minutes total to really kind of get bring itself together. And then the, the thing you do is you want, when you bring it to a boil, let it roll for a good solid five minutes or so, you cover it and you set it aside. And then what's going to happen is, that water is going to absorb right into that bulk of wheat, and it's going to be—it's um, it's almost like uh, almost like when you make a rice, the peel out will absorb that extra liquid. And then, and notice I didn't put any salt or butter, and both of those ingredients are usually um, standards. And when you get started on on the bulk of wheat, but I left it with just water because we've got a lot of other flavors we're going to throw in there, fresh vegetables and, and a little bit of pinch of vinegar that's going to help to bring out some of the uh, natural flavor of it. So now we got a good solid roll and boil. And before that water cooks out of it, you don't want it to go too crazy because if the water evaporates before it actually has time to let that bulgur wheat cook. So we're going to turn it down just a little bit, down to probably about a medium heat and let it simmer. Because again, you don't want to evaporate all that water out of there before the bulgur wheat's actually cooked. See, now you can see the wheat. You don't have that roll where you can't see it anymore. So we're going to let it cook for just another couple of minutes or so. And once it's cooked, you put it in a bowl and you let it cool. And you let it stand probably for about, a, I don't know, about a, say about a half hour or so. And this is what it's going to look like once you let it cool down. And it, notice all the water's evaporated out of it and I've already got it in a bowl to go ahead and season it for our, our salad. 
So we're going to get started right into the components and I've got a half a lemon here that I'm actually going to squeeze into a strainer and squeeze that juice out. And I'm using the fork, but I also have a little mesh basket here to prevent the seeds from going in because we really only want, and it ends up being about a quarter cup of lemon juice that we're going to add right into that. Now the, the tabbouleh after it's cooked will double in size, so you'll end up with probably about two cups of cooked bulgur wheat. So I've got that quarter cup of lemon juice in there. We're going to add a to about two tablespoons of, about, about a tablespoon and a half of apple cider vinegar. Then I'm gonna take the tomatoes that we just started dicing here. And that's probably about a cup of diced tomatoes. About a half a cup of diced Vidalia, I've got Vidalia onion here, about a half a cup. I'm gonna probably do about a quarter cup of green onion, which is delicious. Got to have some fresh garlic in there. So we're going to take probably about a teaspoon of fresh garlic. And that's just me because I like to have that, that bite on the end. Then um, the chopped parsley. Now, the thing about the tabbouleh is you never have enough parsley. Now, when I make this in my day job, I never put enough in it. I always make the salad and I always end up adding more parsley to it. For some reason, you can't have enough parsley in there. So it's, uh, it's supposed to be 50-50. But now we're gonna make this, and we're just gonna kind of toss this around. Now I've got, remember, I've got very, very little liquid in there. We're gonna add some olive oil to it, and we're also gonna add maybe a pinch of edge at the end once we taste it. But all those vibrant flavors in there should start to come out. And, and this is one of those salads that gets better as it sits. So we're gonna throw some cracked black pepper in there. And that's probably about a tablespoon or so. Maybe uh, a teaspoon, uh, two teaspoons, I'd say, will probably be enough. You don't wanna to go too heavy. I mean, unless you like pepper. And that's, uh, that's a good thing. Now, I've got here already cleaned uh, pomegranate seeds we've already cleaned up and this is about enough seeds from a half of a pomegranate to go into this much salad so we'll add that right in there and the last thing we're gonna add is olive oil and then we'll taste it and maybe we'll just kiss it with the edge we're not gonna add too much we're gonna add olive oil and olive oil will help to uh, give it a little bit more balance as a salad and it'll be so dry this, I'm adding probably about a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil and we're going to give this a toss and I, I would recommend when you're using your olive oils use the good stuff in your salads when you're cooking with olive oil you can get away with using a, a less less of a, a, a quality but you don't want to sacrifice when you're using the salad so let's see what this tastes like and I, I'll tell you with whole grains usually with the starchy stuff you're going to need a little bit of salt in there but let's see what it's what it's like right now Mm. Now see, we're getting the sweetness from that pomegranate coming through, and that's really, really, it's really bold flavor, and a little bit of a hint of vinegar in there, which is good, a little bit of a hint of lemon in there, which is good too, but I'm just gonna, I'm literally gonna put a half a teaspoon of the edge in there, not even, just a pinch, you saw that pinch I put in this whole, whole salad, and that's it, because uh, I'm really trying to stay away from the salt, especially in this episode, but just even just in general, because they're finding out more and more how much of a killer salt is, which is unfortunate. So, so you, in our normal diet, we're really trying to cut back, and I think um, I think it'll be a good idea for you too as well. But let's check out the salad. This is a done salad now; it's completed. And I'm going to give it another taste after finishing it off with the edge. Let's see what this is all about. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, mm. that is a great salad. Now, there's so many other things you can do with this. It's so versatile. Different seasons, you can throw different things into it. Um, summertime, cut up some strawberries. Throw some strawberries in there. Um, you know, wintertime, you can even do some watermelon things like that too. But um, this salad, like I said, is so versatile. So many people do different things to it. Uh, it's great even just by itself. This is great if you make hummus and you serve it up, you know, do a toasted pita chips and really kind of do a nice spread, which we may even do an episode of that later. You'll see this come back again, but it's, it's just such a versatile and such a great salad. So we'll put this aside and we're gonna get right into our dressing for our salad. Now with the dressing, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to uh, put a small sauce pot on the stove because we wanna have the dressing to cook down a little bit. 
Uh, we're actually going to cook up some fresh cranberries, believe it or not. I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever worked with fresh cranberries or not. But what we're doing here is I'm just going to dice up a pear. We're going to saute that pear with a little bit of ginger, fresh ginger. So let's get our pan hot here. And I'm just going to dice up. Skin on, that's fine because it's gonna end up more like a chutney. And, and if the pear is still a little chunky in the dressing, that's okay, because it's just gonna get tossed into the greens, which is fantastic, as far as I'm concerned. So I've got one more small piece to do here, and we're gonna go ahead and throw that right into the pot. Again, it's a small sauce pot, and we're going to add probably about a tablespoon of ginger. Wow, the pear's already hitting that pan throwing off a scent with that ginger and uh, and I like to add a little bit extra ginger because I find that when I make this dressing it doesn't um, it doesn't seem like it comes out at the end so I wanted to I want it really to be bold again we're talking about those fresh ingredients and really bold flavors because the stronger the flavors are from these natural ingredients the less false stuff you're gonna have to throw into it like sugars refined sugars and you know and, and salts that are really bad for your health so we're looking to get the flavors to come from all this fresh stuff that we're working with here. So now I've got um, I've got the pears and I've got the ginger, and you can start to smell them. And and you want to catch them before they really brown because you don't. That's not what our intent is here. We're not trying to make them brown. We want them to soften up. And, oh man, what a combination! Sweetness, the savoriness of the ginger, the lemony, vibrant uh, aromas that are coming from it. So now we're going to take about a half a cup of water and throw that in there. We're going to simmer that right in. And now that it's automatically coming right up because that pan was good and hot, I'm going to go ahead and throw about a cup of fresh cranberries in there. And the cranberries are going to pop open with that heat. In a matter of minutes. So, also on top of that, I'm going to add about two teaspoons of orange zest, which is what I have here. I don't know if you can see that. And that's uh, basically just the skin of the orange without the, without the white stuff. It's just the outside orange stuff. And I peeled that off and I diced it up real fine. And we're gonna throw some cinnamon in there. And I'm gonna put probably about two teaspoons of cinnamon in it. And if you listen real close, you can actually start to hear the cranberries popping like Rice Krispies. get this stirred up a little bit here. And yeah, this I, I think you might have heard me say chutney. This is almost like a chutney. We're gonna make a similar similar chutney, and then we're gonna add our vinegar and our oil and turn it into a vinaigrette, which is gonna be really sexy. Wow, it smells like Thanksgiving in here. With the cranberries and the cinnamon and the pears, ah, and there's a little bit of that lemony ginger coming through at the end. So, all right, so we've got this here. Now we're gonna add our honey, and this is the only sweetening agent, and again, it's a natural product. So this is what we're going to use to sweeten the dressing. And I'm going to add about a third of a cup because it just wasn't quite sweet enough last time I made it. So I wanted to kind of bring it out with about a third of a cup of pure honey. And now is really when it really starts to get thick, looking like a salsa, like a, like a chutney. Because that honey is going to really start to reduce everything down and make it kind of syrupy a little bit, which is okay. And as those cranberries cook down, they're going to start to change the the, uh, the color of that brown cinnamon water to red. So we're going to go ahead and shut this down now because those cranberries all popped open. So now we're going to add about a third of a cup of red wine vinegar right into this mix here. And one of our fans cringed when I was using metal in the anodized pan, so that's why I'm using the plastic spoon here. <laughs> All right, and then, and then on top of that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fold in probably about just under a cup of olive oil. And that's really what's gonna bring this vinegar right home. So we're gonna swirl this right in. And it doesn't really have to be emulsified. It's okay if it isn't, because what's gonna happen is it's gonna get tossed into greens anyway. So we're gonna add it into a, make a nice dressing out of it, so that's, uh, that's going to finish it off. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside, and we'll go ahead and we're going to cut up a pear to add to our salad. And I've got a bowl, I've 
right behind me that we're going to add this stuff to. And I just, all I did was I cored that, I don't know if you saw me core that pair the last time, is I just stood the pair up on its, on its stem like this, and I just cut right down the stem line, boom, 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 to four, four chunks. This one's nice and bright too, though. And then I'm just going to cut it into thin slices, just like that. And that's going to get tossed right into the salad. What I have here is I have uh, some field greens. We, uh, we have some oak leaf, some radicchio, some Belgian endive. We have some um, red romaine. We have some, let's see what else is in here, some frise. And it's just a, just a basic blend of wild greens. And I also sliced up a little julienne um, uh, Vidalia onion to go in there as well. And then I'm gonna throw these pears in there. And you wanna add the dressing when it's completely cooled down. So what I've done is I have some of that dressing behind me. I'm going to use that dressing that's already cool because the last thing I want to do is add a hot dressing to the lettuce because it'll wilt the lettuce really quick. So this is what the finished product looks like. Looks like a nice hearty salad dressing, almost like a salsa. So we'll put some of that right on there. Bob, there's a photo op right there. I don't even know if I should mix it, huh? That looks like a good cover of a magazine. All right, so then I'll take a pair of tongs and I'll just give it a quick toss. And the best thing to do with this, I think, would be to taste it before you add anything to it. And the reason why I say that is because you might decide with your own taste that it doesn't need any salt, it doesn't need any, you know, anything else to it. And that's really what you want. You just want to try to eat a little more healthy and, and think healthy. And that'll, you may talk yourself out of adding that salt. But with me, I think a little bit, pinch of the edge will never hurt. Mm-hmm, yeah, guy. All right, so we're just gonna finish it up. Like I said, you saw how much I put in there. Very, very little, very little. Cause we're trying to be healthy here, so. Oh, man, Bob, oh, the bitter leaves. Oh, with that sweet and savory dressing. Amazing. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll just set this aside, and that's gonna be the salad that we're gonna serve with the fish. And then we're gonna start to sear the fish up here in just a second. So when you go to buy fish, Go to the fish market. Don't ever be afraid to ask the fish vendor or the uh, the monger if you go into a fish market, like a fish market instead of the supermarket. Um, don't ever be afraid to ask him if you can smell it or if you can get in close and really check the quality of it. Because really, when you smell fish, you shouldn't be able to smell anything. If you smell anything, it should be a very, very faint uh, hint of the ocean. It shouldn't ever smell like bleach or any kind of a chemical. If it smells like a chemical, that's already starting to break down and it's no good. You really want to have a good quality fish and don't ever be afraid. I've actually gone into the grocery store, my local grocery store, and, and asked them for a glove and they've given me that glove and I've, I've actually held the fish and felt it in my hands if it's got any, you know, checking for, uh, for, for oils and sliminess and see, because, you know, fish is a very delicate thing and it, it, it does have a very short life expectancy. So you want to make sure the quality is there because you don't want to buy a lousy product. So, um, so that's, that's my spiel on fish. But we've got a, a really nice um, filet of haddock here. And what I've done is I've cut up some pieces and we're gonna just, we're gonna sear it on the, on the pan and it cooks up, we're gonna have it, it's gonna go right into the, right into the pan and we're gonna finish it there. So I've just cut it into filetable pieces and as you can see, I'm cutting it, up, cutting it on the bias and um, on the bias, which is on an angle. And what that does is it helps to thin it out. See how I cut that at an angle? So now it's a little bit thinner. So now it's gonna cook right quick, right in the pan. We don't even have to hit the oven with it or anything. So that's one of the things you wanna look for when you're doing this dish is look for the thinner, not necessarily super thin, but the thinner pieces, because the really thick haddocks, I've seen some haddocks you know, a couple inches thick. You really don't want it to be that thick because then you're gonna to have to finish it at the oven. But this way here, you can um, you can just buy it in, in a nice thin piece and finish it right in the dish here. So. That's um, that's how you fillet it up for the frying. And we're just gonna get this pan hot. And what I want to do is get some oil. And this is some frying oil here. I've got the canola olive oil blend, and probably about two tablespoons in there. We're gonna get that hot. Now, be very careful when you're doing this because one of the things that I found is that it gets really hot, and then next thing you know, it's like bam, 
and then it gets, it, it, it's really, not only does the oil sizzle, does everything sizzle, it gets really hot, it um, also starts to smoke up really bad too. So, you know, get the pan hot and then go on a medium heat. You want it just enough so it's gonna sear the fish and cook it, you know, evenly at a nice medium speed. You don't have to go too crazy with it. So, um, so we've got this pan going here and we're not gonna bread it, we're not gonna batter it, we're not gonna do anything. All we're gonna do is we're gonna get the oil hot, I'm gonna throw it in there, I've got a little bit of wine, I've got some fresh cilantro that I'm going to work while that oil is getting hot. And I'm just going to take a quick knife to the cilantro. And let's put our piece of fish right in there. This looks like a good one. So what I'm going to do first is, oh yeah, that oil's moving around, so I'm going to set this right in there, get a good sear on that. So I've got that piece in there with the oil, but again, be careful because that oil does spatter and there is water in the fish, so you got to be very careful when you're doing it this way. But this is the healthiest way to do it. We've got a nice canola olive oil blend, which is a good quality oil, good for your cholesterol, and all we're doing is we're putting a light sear on one side, and we're gonna flip it and we're gonna finish it on the other side. It's almost like cooking a burger on the grill. When you cook a burger on the grill, you only wanna cook it, you only wanna flip it once. So that way that you cook it halfway, flip it, cook it the other halfway. That's how it stays juicy. I see so many times I go to parties, I go to friends' houses, whatever, and they're smacking the burger with the spatula. You're kind of defeating the purpose. You know, it's not, um, you know, you're not, your goal isn't to dry out the hamburger, is it? I mean, it's, it's not the goal here either. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook it and I can see it starting to come up on the edges just a little bit. You can start to see the whiteness coming through on the side of the haddock. And, and really what we want to do is so we want to get that halfway there. So, yeah, I can feel it. Now, we're, we're good. We're going to start flipping it. So, flip that fish over. And then we're going to put a, a light dusting of uh, cilantro on in here. And then I'm going to squeeze some fresh lemon. While that's searing on that side, we're going to... Put some lemon. Yeah, but I got a half a lemon here. And again, that's probably about a quarter cup. So maybe a little bit less than a quarter cup. Let's let's go ahead and, and we're not really making a sauce here. We're just adding an essence to that fish. And the last thing I'm gonna add is I'm gonna add just a splash of our featured one of the day right in there. I say the last thing, but then I'm going to adjust some seasonings. I'm going to put some fresh black pepper on there because I love it. And again, very, very subtle, very, very light. I'm just going to dust it with the edge. And that's really all it needs right there. And as you can see, the liquid here is starting to cook down a little bit. And the fish itself is starting to flake up a little bit. Oh yeah, we're done. We're done. The fish is done. So. Phenomenal, phenomenal. It did exactly what I was hoping it would do. <laughs> so now we're gonna shut this down and we're gonna work on our plate presentation. So I have our tabbouleh with pomegranate. Put that right on the plate. I've got our tossed salad with a ginger pear and cranberry vinaigrette that I'm gonna put on this plate right here. Oh, look at those pears. It's almost like poached pears in there. Are you kidding me? So now we're going to put a piece of fish right on that plate. Healthy living, healthy eating, good for life. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you clean cooking. Super healthy, super delicious, super nutritious. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Featured wine of the day today is a Pinot Grigio. It's the Rufino Lumina, which is kind of an appropriate name because Lumina means light in Italian, and, and really the light shined on this all of this food today. Uh, we found Bob and I both t we tasted this wine with all of the food, and we found that the the high acidity in that really complemented the salad extremely well. But yet the um, the fruitiness and the and the balance went really well with the, it brought the flavor of the pomegranates out in the uh, tabbouleh. So that was really kind of a cool thing too. But I also found a little bit of a lemon essence in it that went awesome with the cilantro on the fish. So it really complemented the whole deal. Uh, we were really trying to decide what we wanted to serve with this today. We found a nice uh, acidic white that went perfect. So we're gonna give this a try here. I'm gonna sit down and eat a couple minutes.
And I wanted to thank OG. What you're listening to in the background is what is in your wallet. And that is uh, by my friends at Operation Guillotine. And I wanted to say thank you once again to them for the atmosphere. And I wanted to thank you for joining us in our magic, madness, and mayhem. We'll see you next time. Oh, yeah. Mm, I could have some fish.